Hi, in this short video, what we will explore is building a system that allows you to sync products from Commerce.js to Algolia. We'll then create a UI that will search your Algolia index and we'll use the React Instant Search library to do that. That allows us to inject things such as checkboxes so we can filter all of the products that we have in our in inventory uh, with just simply installing a package. So the first thing that we'll need to do is we'll need to create some API routes to manage our webhook. We'll be using Next.js throughout this tutorial for both the backend and frontend fun functionalities. The, the backend functionality will be making use of dynamic API routes. And this is really powerful with Next.js. It allows us to run server-side code and Vercel and the next server takes care of this for us. So you can create a handler that can sync to content to Algolia. You could even create a webhook that triggers some kind of uh, email notification or SMS. Uh, and these can be built and used inside of the API routes in conjunction with uh, CommerceJS's webhooks. Uh, then obviously the thing that ties all this together is CommerceJS itself. CommerceJS is a huge e-commerce uh, platform that's built for developers. It's super friendly to anyone that is looking to get started uh, in the e-commerce space. There's a ton of different getting started tutorials uh, and example projects, but I'm gonna dive in. I suggest you go and create an account with both, with both CommerceJS and with Algolia. And if you haven't heard of Algolia, well, again, this is an excellent tool for search. They have amazing APIs and also UI libraries and SDKs so you can interact and search all of the data that you have and that you want to index. And we'll explore all of this throughout this tutorial. Um, but yeah, create an account with CommerceJS and Algolia, uh, and then we're ready to roll. So take from this tutorial what you can. I'm going to dive in. It's going to be really fast paced. And we're going to get as much going as possible. So I hope you enjoy. First, let's enter the check dashboard and add a new webhook. And the events we want to watch for are products created, deleted, and updated. Then we need to provide a URL for our webhook. And for the demonstration of this tutorial, what we'll do is we'll grab a new hook bin endpoint and we'll paste that into here. We'll go back and update this with our live webhook a little later, but let's just have a look and see what the payload looks like that CommerceJS fires. Then all that's left to do to trigger this webhook is edit any one of your products or create one or delete one. So inside of my product here, I'm just gonna update the name for the product and click save. Now that the product's been saved, if we go to hook bin and refresh, we'll see that just a few seconds ago, a new event was triggered through check. And this endpoint was triggered and all of the data that we need to sync to Algolia has been provided to us in the payload. This includes the name that we changed, the description, price, and anything else. Let's begin by initializing a new Next.js project. We'll use npx create next app and give the app a name. We'll use the default starter app for our project. Once the dependencies are installed, we'll change directory into our new project. And then we can run yarn add Algolia search. Now we'll open the project in our code editor. And then if we head on over to the pages directory, we'll see this folder API with the file hello.js. We'll rename this file in just a little while, but first of all, let's go ahead and import Algolia search from Algolia search. Then we need to instantiate a new client for Algolia and we need to pass in two variables. The first argument will be the app ID, which we'll get from the environment variables. And secondly is the admin API key. We'll populate these values from our Algolia account in just a second. But first, let's continue writing our serverless function. And this is a function that will be invoked whenever our webhook is triggered. First, let's have a look at Algolia's docs and see what we need to do. When we call index.save object, we need to pass in the actual object. The object must include the object ID. This is how you can reference it and call to update it later or delete it. So first, let's destructure from the request body, the event and the payload. Now the event body is what's given to us from commerce.js when that webhook is triggered. So first we'll destructure the ID and we'll also reassign it to the variable object ID. 
Then we'll spread everything else into the variable payload. We can then use the event and destructure that. Let's first get the resource and then the trigger. We're using a destruction of array method here, and we, so we need to split the event by the period in the middle. If we head on over to our example payload, we can see we have the event products.update. So if we just run some JavaScript in our browser, we can see what the output looks here. Here we have an array, products, and update. So if we destructure the first and second arguments from that array, we'll get the resource and trigger. Products being the resource and update being the trigger. Now inside of our code, let's go ahead and check to see whether the trigger is either create or update. So we can do if, and then our array of update and create. And if this includes trigger, we can then do a return here. And all we need to do is return a status, and we'll set that status in just a second. But let's go ahead and return the JSON that's returned to us from calling Algolia. So inside of here, we can do a wait index dot save object and then we can pass in that new object. And the object will have a object ID, and then we'll spread in the rest of our payload. Then all that's left to do is to set this status. So let's check to see whether this trigger is create. And if it is, we will return a 201, otherwise we will return 202. Now to make this work, all we need to do is instantiate our index. So let's go ahead above our if statement, let's assign to index index, and then inside of parentheses, We'll pass in resource. This is telling Algolia we want to use the index that is of type resource. And in our example, this will be product. If you wanted to index other methods and other variables and objects that are coming from CommerceJS, this will just work out of the box. If you choose to monitor things such as products as well as categories as well as orders or carts, this will automatically instantiate and initialize a new index for that resource. Then all that's left to do is before any of this runs is to check to see whether this is of type delete. If the trigger is to delete, then let's go ahead and delete from our goal here where the object ID is the object ID in the event. Then let's return to the user a response that has the status code 204. It will not return anything in the body with that status code. And finally, if none of these conditions match, let's return a 422 and we will pass a message that the trigger is not valid. Finally, let's go ahead and wrap our code inside of a try catch block. If the code executes, it will work. Otherwise, if there's an error with the Algolia instance, we want to go ahead and return error. The message, I will default to something went wrong, and then we'll return a response that is of state as 500, and it will return JSON with the message. Now let's go ahead and populate the environment variables. And the next public prefix is there because we'll need this on the front end when we create our search UI. So inside of your Algolia account, once you've logged in or created an account, you'll create an application and the first thing you'll want to do is create an index. Let's just create the index for products. And there's nothing else we need to do here. This index will be managed automatically through our webhook. So on the left-hand side, let's scroll down and click on API keys. From here, let's copy the application ID and add that to our environment variable file. Then let's grab the admin API key and paste that in also. Then all that's left to do is run yarn dev to run our Next.js server. Now if we go ahead and copy all of the data that's inside of our example payload, I'm now going to trigger that webhook locally. And I'm choosing to do this because I don't have to set up some kind of proxy from CommerceJS to my local machine. I can just make a HTTP request, and in this case, a POST request to that endpoint. So I'll make a request to localhost slash API slash Algolia, and then inside of the body, we'll pass JSON, and we'll pass in the object from our hook bin test. You'll see here we have the event, the payload, and everything we need in order to successfully trigger the webhook. But you'll first notice that we have a 404. And this is because when we first created the project, we kept the file hello.js. If we rename this now to algolia.js and we trigger the webhook again, you'll see now that we'll get an object ID, which is the one we've provided, and also a task ID, informing us that this has been instantiated and the task is running on algolia to index. Then if we head on over to algolia and we have a look at our 
index for products, you'll see that the product we sent inside of the payload is now synced with Algolia. Everything from the SEO, the meta, and any of the verbs and conditionals are also passed along and saved to Algolia. Now if we go ahead and update the event to be products.delete and send that request, you'll notice we get the correct 204 HTTP response that we coded, and also in Algolia, when we refresh, it's gone. So we now have everything set up to go ahead and build a UI for all of the products that we choose to index with Algolia. Now I begin by installing the React Instant Search DOM library. And this is a library from Algolia. We'll need this to create all of the search UI for our application. When that is installed, we'll run the next server using npm run dev or yarn dev if you prefer. Then inside of the pages index.js, we'll remove all of the boilerplate that Next gave us when we initialized the new project. And now we will export a new index page. And inside of here, we'll just return a simple h1, search products for now. Then if we head over to localhost 3000, we should see this h1 on the page, nothing out of the ordinary. Now let's import Algolia search from Algolia search like we did in our serverless function before. Then we'll also import instant search and hits from the react instant search DOM package. Then like we did earlier, we need to instantiate a new client for our Algolia search. However, this time, while we pass in the app ID, we need to pass in a search API key, not the admin API key like we had before. We don't have this environment variable, so we'll need to go ahead and create this. Just like we did before, we will populate the value and we'll set that inside of .env. And if you head on over to the Algolia dashboard and head to the API key section, you'll be able to get the search only API key. Simply copy this, add it to the env file and close. Now we can go about fetching all of our products from Algolia and using the instant search to do this. So inside of the page, I'm just going to wrap the application in some React fragments, and then I'm going to invoke the instant search component. I'm gonna pass the prop search client and pass down my client instance, and then I'm going to specify the prop index name as products. Then inside of this, the children will be of hits, and hits takes a prop called hit component, so if we pass a new component called product, what we can do is we can destructure hit from the props that are passed to the product component. For now, let's just return all of the JSON that is inside of hit. Now, if we stop and restart the next server to pick up the new env variables and head over to localhost 3000, we should see that we have a network request. And inside of the network request, you will get the results and the hits from Algolia. Now in this case, there are none because the last thing we did was delete the product from Algolia. So if I make the same request as earlier, but this time change the event to products.create, this will create and index that product with Algolia. And if we refresh, we'll see that we have the kitchen sink journal that we added through that event. Let's now take a look at the Algolia documentation for React Instance Search. If we have a look on the left, we can see that we have a widget showcase. If we open up this widget showcase, you can see there are various parts to it. As we scroll down, we can see that we have some kind of breadcrumb component. We have some stats about how many results we have and how long it took to fetch those results. Then we have things like sorting our results by price. Uh, we also have a input here to search values and we can freely type into this and this will return some results. We then can do things such as clearing. We can also see any list of current refinements. So if I typed in Fire TV, you'll see here that the value here is reflected on the right here in the hits component. We can see on the left that we have a refinement list widget, and this widget is shown as a list of all the brands. So if we click on one brand or two brands, you'll see that the results are instantly updated. So the possibilities with React Instant Search by Algolia are endless. We can also see that we have some numeric menus. 
range inputs and range, range sliders given to us for free with the library. We can also toggle between free shipping or not. So immediately looking at these, we can see that some of the things we may want to do is we may want to allow users to filter by product category, or they may want to toggle between any products that are digital or not. If we have a look at the data and we scroll down and we have a look at some of the conditionals that we have and some of the verbs, you'll see that some of the conditionals here is we have things for is free. We can also filter by is pay what you want uh, and also anything else such as uh, deliver, digital delivery. So what we'll need to do in order to make these conditionals usable is we actually need to configure our Algolia index. So if we head on over to the Algolia dashboard and head on over to the products index and we click on configuration, what we'll be able to do is if we drop down and we click on facets, we can add a new attribute that we want to enable faceting on. So we could do has digital delivery and we'll set that as one. I'm going to save those settings because at the moment, let's just add a checkbox for has digital delivery. Then we'll click save. And then if we head on over to the widget and we look at the different components that are available. Now, if we simply copy the widget signature for toggle refinement and we head on over to our application. Now, if we insert that toggle refinement code snippet, what we'll do is we will replace the label with a string and the attribute with a string as well. So the attribute will be has digital delivery and then also the label will be digital delivery. Then if we update the value, we must provide the value for when it is checked. So the results by default will show everything. And if you click this checkbox, it will show just products that are digital delivery only. Now, if we see what this looks like, you'll see we now have a checkbox that is automatically added through Algolia. And if I check on, if I check this checkbox, you'll see that nothing happens. And this is because this product also has digital delivery. And by default, it will show all of your results. This is just a way to refine your results. So to make this really useful now to kind of see how this is working. Now to see this working with more results, let's add some. So back inside of Insomnia, we will create another request. This time I'm going to change the ID because I don't want to update anything. So I'm just going to change the number there. And also let's change this to be a, another product. And we'll also update the has value. So we look for digital delivery and we'll set this to false. Now let's go ahead and submit this. And that will now be indexed with Algolia. And if we refresh the page here, you'll now see we have this new product. And if we click on has digital delivery, you'll see now it's not very easy to see, but we only have one product here. If we uncheck that, you'll see that the other results come back. So let's add some more products because next we want to add a refinement list component for our categories. So I'm going to go back here and I'm also going to change this ID. These IDs just need to be unique. And then the name, we'll just change this to be the uh, kitchen sink journal two. And also we'll scroll down to where it passes the categories. Uh, we only really need the name, if I'm honest for now. What we'll do is we will say that this is homeware and we will send that. Let's create one more. So we'll create the category bedroom and we will create another unique ID for our product. And we'll also go ahead and we'll update this to be some kind of wardrobe. Now that that is added and we go back here, everything is still working as normal as we expect. But now let's go ahead and add a new component. So inside the Algolia documentation, we'll head on back to the widget gallery. And this time what we want to do is we want to take this refinement list component. So let's take a look at the docs and see what is required here. Let's scroll down and see a few examples. First, we'll need to import the refinement list component. So let's do that. Now we've imported that, we can then invoke the component like this. And this time this will be categories. Now this won't work if we check, nothing will appear. What we need to do is we need to tell Algolia that we want to search on this. So here we'll do categories. We'll actually call categories.name and we'll save and review. 
And then back inside of our code, we will update this to be categories.name. Then back on localhost 3000, you'll now see we can click between these results and we can see products. You can see these are changing based on the entries that I add. So this is all of the data inside of Algolia and you can use this to display a product grid like you would on your normal website. And then you can add a really advanced search. So you see here when I click these two, that the actual number of results actually update inside of the refinement list component. So as I click here, if I click has digital delivery, these results will automatically update, making it really easy for your users to find the products they want. You can do so much more with Algolia, including customizing the look and feel of the existing components and creating your own. I've set up Tailwind with this project so I can style all of the components. I've then applied some of the styles to create this look that we have here. This is all of the components built by Algolia, but I am able to style those myself to match the look and feel of my existing website. When we first started, we created a webhook and we entered a hookbin URL. This hookbin URL allowed us very quickly to get a copy of the payload that was sent from Check. However, this is not very useful in development, nor is it useful in production. What you'll want to do is you will want to set a URL here in production to your live website. So this could end up being yourwebsite.com slash API slash Algolia. What we'll do for development purposes to actually emulate the entire flow is we are going to use a service called ngrok. And what this allows us to do inside of the terminal is tunnel through a request from an endpoint to our local host. So if we make a copy of this HTTPS endpoint, and then back inside of check, we add this. And don't forget to add slash API slash Algolia and save. What we'll now be able to do is if we go to a product, let's say Walnut Cook Stools, and we just update the name, we save that product. If we head back to webhooks, what we should now see is that this has been triggered. Now back in here, if we refresh, you'll now see that the title of the product has been updated. So this entire flow is working with ngrok locally, and this is typically something that I would do during development. Uh, this endpoint will change every time you stop and start ngrok, so you can pay for a pers persisted URL uh, to make that process a little easier. You could also set inside of your deployment service such as Netlify or Vercel a preview endpoint or environment variable for your endpoints and you can always keep those up to date inside of check. Uh, you could even fire up multiple webhooks whenever anything updates. It could go to your staging environment and it could also go to your production environment. So there's just a few ways in which you can manage your webhook URLs. Uh, personally, I prefer using ngrok during development. So hopefully you found this tutorial useful and if you've got any questions, please feel free to reach out in the comments and all of the code for this is available on GitHub.